Hello and welcome back to another video. This video today is a bit of a, a continuation of a video, a previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video, I will link it in the description down below or I'll put a card up. And I want to talk about a trading strategy. It's a strategy that I showed you using RSI2 to trade the S&P 500. And today, what I want to do is to show you exactly how to code it. So if you're curious about how strategies are coded into software and then you can back test or, or even go on, on and auto trade that strategy, then you're going to like this video. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through each step of the code and I'm going to break it down and make it very simple. You can find the strategy code for this particular strategy on the internet, but what I've done is I've taken that, or I haven't taken that, I've compared mine to that. I like to go as basic as possible and I've broken it down to the bare minimum so that it's very easily understandable. I'm going to do it in multi charts, that's what I use. It uses a language that's very similar to that of TradeStation. And if you want to try things out yourself, you can actually get a 30 day free trial of multi charts so you can practice yourself back testing. You can try this code that I'm about to show you and you can change the parameters, have a play around with things, see how things work. So to start with, let's just remind ourselves of the rules of this strategy, this RSI2 strategy. If you remember, it's a, or don't remember, because you might not have seen it yet, but it's a long only strategy that trades on the daily chart of the S&P 500. So first of all, we're gonna look for long, a long setup. I'm just gonna write down the rules. We need to see, make sure that the S&P 500 is in an overall uptrend and to do that we need the closing price of the S&P 500 to be above its 200 period moving average. So first rule is the close above 200 moving average. Now we know that we're in a sort of an overall uptrend, we're looking to buy slight pullbacks. So second rule, ever so simple, we're looking at RSI, we're actually looking at a two period RSI, not the standard 14 period. Looking at a two period RSI and when the RSI drops below 10, then we look to buy at the close of that bar. So look at the RSI 2, is below the value of 10, then buy at the close. That's it, three rules. And for our exit rules, we just got one rule. All we want to do is when the closing price is above the 10 period moving average, then we want to exit the trade. So exit when close above the 10 period moving average. I know people have asked, these are simple moving averages. It doesn't make too much difference whether they're simple or exponential. So now we know the rules, now I'm going to actually write the code out on the board, which is going to be a bit tricky, that's why I've used this big, big board, but I've got it here in front of me on the computer in multi-charts, so make sure I'm doing it exactly right. Now, I'm a trader, I'm certainly not an expert coder, but I do know how to code multi-charts to do what I want it to do with regards to putting the rules of a strategy in the system. And there's many different ways to achieve the same result. So there could be many different variations, slight variations, 
of the code in the strategy and they will bring you the same result so everyone does things very differently uh, the way I'm showing you here is the very almost the, the bare minimum of what you need to put this strategy in and get it tested get it trading so first of all we can put in what's called uh, comments in, in the code these comments aren't recognized by the code uh, when it's performing, well, all it is is for you to almost write well, comments or notes to tell you what you're doing. So first of all, let's write uh, a comment and this is going to be our entry entry line. So the next line of code is going to be purely for the entry. So we start off um, we start off with if the market position if the market position now that means what that's doing then the code is then or the machine is then recognizing or checking whether we're actually in a trade or not so we want to only start this code if we're not in a trade now that is a market position equals zero if the market position was minus one, we'd be in a short trade, and if it was one, then we would have already be in a long trade. So just to get to start things off, if the market position is zero, we're not in a trade, then we can carry on. And because there's, a, there's, there's additional rules, we want the RSI, the two period RSI, to be below 10. So open brackets the the R stand aside the RSI and we need to know uh, what the RSI is using whether it's using the close or the high or the low so we we're actually using this is a bracket we're looking at the, the close comma and then the period we're using a, a two period if you remember two period RSI and if that is, I've actually got uh, below or equal to 10, it could just be below 10, I've got it equal to close brackets. So two rules, if the market position is zero, we're not in a trade, then we can carry on. And the RSI, the two period RSI is below 10 or equal to 10. Then we can go on to the last condition, which is we need to, we need, and the close of the price is above the 200 period moving average. So, and it's a bracket, the close is above the the average which is of the close comma 200 period so there's our three conditions market position is zero RSI drops below 10 and the close is above the 200 period moving average then we're good to go then we want to buy at the close so then all we do then is then buy this bar at the close. Oh, apologise for my handwriting. And we always finish off the line of code with a semicolon. And that is the code for the entry. It's, well, I think it's relatively straightforward. I've tried to simplify it as much as I can. So just once again, if we're not in a trade, so market position zero, and the two period RSI drops below 10, and the price is above the 200 period moving average, then buy this bar at the close.
that's it, and then that's that's simple. Then we need to go on and look at the exit. In the next video, I will actually show you the code in the Power Language Editor and we'll look at it on the charts, make sure it's all working. So don't panic about needing to copy down the code or anything. It will be become much clearer in the next video as well. So now this will be the next line of the code on the same page and everything. Uh, another comment, we just write exit. And you remember there's less rules here, but we start off again by saying if we're in a if we're in a trade and it'll only be a long trade because it's a long only strategy. So if the market position is equal to one, remember one is a long trade, zero's not in a trade, minus one is a short trade. And now we're looking for our condition. We're looking at wanting the, the price to be above its 10 period moving average. So what we use is, I'll start a new line, but we don't have to start a new line in the editor. It doesn't make any difference. So the close is above. the average of the close and the 10 period. So that's purely our exit condition. The close is above the 10 period moving average. Then sell this bar at close, semicolon, and that's it. One less uh, condition to the entry. With the entry, we were looking for wanting to be above the 200 period moving average and the RSI to drop. The exit, much simpler. Once we're in a, tri a long trade, number one, and the close is above the 10 period moving average, and sell this bar at the close, and that's it. That's about as simple as I can make it. So I hope you've understood that. That's multi-charts, that's the code used in multi-charts, or very similar to TradeStation. And in the next video, I'm gonna go over to the computer, we'll have a look at it, and what we do, make sure it's working on the screen, on the charts, make sure visually we'll, we can look, and make sure that the entries and the exits are as we expected. They will be, because I've tested this code numerous times. And then we can have a look, run a back test, and we can have a look at a performance report. I'll walk you through all the numbers, or all the important numbers of the performance report. The ones I look at before I decide whether or not I'm going to take, you know, trade that particular strategy you know, in live trading. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that interesting. I hope it's not too confusing. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. If you like the video, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video with anyone who you think might find it useful too. So until the next time, we'll be we go over to MultiChance. Thank you and goodbye.